it ain't easy, believe it. One way or another, I know it's for Jesus. He is faith as big as a mustard seed is. All the things in this world are needless. All but he is a Bible and a verse. Put the Bible beneath the hearse. Put the shackles off this curse. He beat the worst. And when you wake up, wait, make sure you put God first. Put God first. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in His Son. This ain't a shameless home, just trying to avoid where the shameless go. Love my father home, deeper than a bridge. Hi, I'm Miss Toy, and I want to welcome you to Inside the Haven, where we are mentoring minds and changing lives. And we do that by bringing uh, career and business professionals to you, where we can have an up close and personal conversation. And they let us know what they do, how they do what they do, who they are, uh, and why they do what they do. So you, young, young man, young lady, can identify your purpose. You might see this person and find out. Uh, oh, I want to do what they do, or just encourage them what you're already doing, what you already know, that's what you want to do. So I want to take a moment to tell you, mom or dad, uh, auntie, uncle, grandma, grandpa, go and get uh, that young person that you love and let them know that Inside the Haven is on right now. Uh, and with that, before I introduce my guest, my wonderful guest here today, um, my encouragement for you today is don't excuse yourself from success. Um, scripture says that we are to make no provision for the flesh. Uh, you know, you making provision for the flesh is, is when you are not confident, you feel like you can't do whatever it is you need to do, uh, and when we're not confident and feel like we can't do it, then we go, we start making excuses. Excuses like, uh, uh, you'll find an excuse not to go to school, you'll find excuses not, not to participate in the thing that you know you're good at, or even become a, a nerd. Being a nerd is not a bad word. <laughs> um, but don't excuse yourself from your success. Go to school. Get your work done. Uh, believe that you can do it. God has given you everything that you need. It's already within you to be who, who he's created you to be and to do the thing that you want to do. Okay? All right. So I'm going to introduce you today, um, my distinguished guest, um, Dr. Uh, Belinda Ross. Um, and to tell you the truth, to be open and honest, she's my sister-in-law, my sister-in-love. Uh, I love her dearly, and I thank her for uh, consenting to be here with us today. Uh, so, Linda... Belinda. <laughs> it's all so, right. It's all right. Okay. So, no, Dr. Belinda, uh, how long have you um, been a doctor? Wow. And well, 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 even before that, I don't know if I said this, but what type of doctor are you? I am a clinical psychologist. Okay. Uh, I'm a Christian therapist. Okay. As well. And, and what what does what does that mean? What is a what does a clinical psychologist do? Basically, um, what I do is I actually treat people for all kinds of emotional and mental problems, starting from little children to adults. Uh, we handle all kinds of different issues in people's lives mm -hmm. and uh, the emotional issues. Christians can have problems too, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I'm real happy to be here, by the way, uh -huh. and to be able to even talk about this because a lot of times, even in the church, we don't want to talk about it. But the problems can be there too. We're all human still. Mm -hmm. And we hurt, we grieve, we do all kinds of things that affect us emotionally. So I work with the churches, sometimes as a consultant. Uh, the pastors call me and say, Dr. Ross, I've gone as far as I can go. I need your help professionally. Mm -hmm. And so we step in and again, as a Christian, I'm received better mm -hmm. as well because they know that I have that Christian background. I truly believe in God, and I truly believe in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's good. That's what I, I want. I want my young people out there to know that uh, you can do anything. God has given you a purpose. It's wonderful, and you can do it. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, we, we all come from a background, and, and we all, I think we were talking about this the other day, that 
uh, we all, I believe that we all come from some type of dysfunction. Mm -hmm. My dysfunction is, was, was different from my husband's. Right. And, and so, but it can be overcome. Right. It can all be overcome. Um, so why, what made you choose being a, a clinical psychologist as a career? I was raised by a Baptist minister, my grandfather, and I loved going to church. I loved learning about God, but as a, as a young person, as a yeah. young person, but as I began to grow in the church and I started to see Christians with problems, you know, crying and kind of withdrawing and things like that. And I wondered, was there anything else that I could do? Mm -hmm. And so I did my own little research. I love going to the library. Mm -hmm. And I found out that you could be a Christian therapist. So I thought, that's kind of what I want to do. Mm -hmm. It wasn't accepted quickly in my home, my grandfather. <laughs> I told him I wanted to be uh, a psychologist, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be a Christian psychologist. And he said, I just knew one of my children would be crazy. <laughs> So he thought that that's what it was, but mm -hmm. I do want to share what really, truly grabbed me and said, this is it, I'm going to do it, is that I came home to visit my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to just running in the house, I'm here, I'm here, got there and couldn't find anybody. And I'm like, the door's open, where's everybody? Mm -hmm. And I went to my grandparents' bedroom. And I saw my grandfather standing in the window with his back to me. And I said, what's the matter? What's the matter? I'm here. And he kind of didn't want to turn around. But when he turned around, the tears were just streaming from his face. What happened? And I said to him, what's the problem? And he said that he was raised in Mississippi. And he was looking out of the window at a tree that day. Mm -hmm. And he said he remembered how his brother was lynched in Mississippi oh hanging God. from a tree. And he started to cry, and his mother said, do not cry, because if you do, you're going to be in that tree. He said, I held my tears all these years, uh -huh. and now I just needed to let them go. So I sat down with him and just let him talk and talk and talk. By the time he finished, he was hugging me, and he said, he, if, and he said if anybody says <laughs> anything about my granddaughter uh -huh. becoming a psychologist, they need to shut up. Wow. And he supported me from that day on. So I, I, I wonder, though what if anything that could have held him back from doing or accomplishing because he had that memory and held on to it all that time well I think too we have to look at this a little bit more diverse mm -hmm. culturally we're diverse in some cultures you are not to discuss mental illness mm -hmm. you are not to even act like you know anything about mental illness mm -hmm. you're expected to be strong and I guess you're not supposed not to have a mental illness exactly yeah. there's no such thing which we know that it is mm -hmm. culturally we can be bound by that and so we tend not to seek help mm -hmm. but the problem is when we don't seek that help and see how simple that could have been when people don't seek the help that they need they think that they got it all under control. Mm -hmm. This is why we see our hospitals now full of people who are not there for physical problems, mm -hmm. but emotional problems. We see our jails full. We see our children dropping out of school. We see our children angry, frustrated, and getting into things that they don't have to. Because they can't or don't or won't talk to someone. Exactly, because they cannot. And sometimes, especially with young people, it's kind of hard to go to mm -hmm. an older person trying to explain what's going on with you, especially mm -hmm. if that person cannot communicate with you. Mm -hmm. It's a one-way thing, mm -hmm. and we have to open up our minds. We have to start listening to our children. Mm -hmm. They're always trying to tell us, but we have to learn how to start to listen to them as well. A side note, because I, I know a lot of schools, I know, I know Flint schools, I don't know about charter schools, but they have uh, a school social workers. I know. Right. At the, so what is the difference between um, a social... You were a social worker. I you? was. And uh, between the social worker and uh, the psychologist. Okay. There or is, 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 it, is it psychology takes it social work uh, to mm -hmm. another level? Okay. What happens is um, there are clinical social workers. Mm -hmm. I'm an LCSW right here mm -hmm. in Michigan. I'm still an LCSW along with being a psychologist. Okay. So I was a medical social worker first. And so the social workers in the schools, basically they're looking at, you know, if these children 
uh, have been abandoned or they're coming to school unkept and need to go in the home and see what's going on mm -hmm. with the child, was the child possibly abused, and they're looking for things like that. On the other hand, as a clinical psychologist, I work directly with psychiatrists who are first medical doctors. Mm -hmm. Then they do residency and become psychiatrists. So I'm clinical. I'm really more on the medical end mm -hmm. of it. I do a lot of psychotherapy and counseling. More direct, I do diagnosis and treatment. And this is a little different from the role of the social worker. Of course, if I have a child and I believe that something else is going on, I am a mandated reporter, so mm -hmm. I do follow that. But usually, even as mandated reporters, we call in social workers mm -hmm. to help us make sure that child is okay. Wow, that that brought a lot of clarity to that. I, I mean, I, of course, I knew there was a difference, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what the difference was. And maybe there's somebody out there listening, you didn't know what the difference was either. So we thank God for the clarity. Uh, so how long have uh, have you been how, how long have you been a clinical psychologist? I didn't want to tell you that. That's gonna date me a You're little 29. bit. You're twenty nine. I'm not twenty nine. Uh, I graduated with my doctorate in nineteen eighty six. Okay. Uh, and did go immediately into practice. I practiced for quite a while. Okay. Uh, I had a ten year practice in Los Angeles, California, mm -hmm. where I treated multiple disorders from major depression to schizophrenia, um, some of the anti-anxiety um, disorders, mm -hmm. and uh, from children to adults, couples, families. I wanted all of it because I wanted to know my best fit and where I mm -hmm. was really helping someone. So it's been, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. I also teach it. I now teach what I know. Mm -hmm. Right. And at some point, I'm, matter of fact, very soon, I'm thinking about going back into uh, private practice for a little while okay. also. Okay. Um, so, but I can tell you how it goes. Okay, yeah, how's it go? I, let, let them know how it goes. Okay. I first had to get a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. which is four years. And I got my bachelor's degree in sociology. Then I had two more years to get a master's degree. I went right here in Michigan to Eastern Michigan University and got that. And then I had to do so. So what? what the I'm sorry. You've got bachelor's degree uh -huh. in sociology. Oh, in counseling. In counseling. The master's was in counseling. Okay, that was the two years. Right. Okay. And then five years uh, to become um, get a doctorate in clinical psych. So it was five years after the four and the two. It was right. five more. Right. Wow. 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 You know, but a young man, young lady, it can be done. It, it takes a while. Well, but you weren't able to go straight through though. No, and. Um, I do want to... Does anybody actually become a doctor going straight through that? That's a long time. They do. Uh, okay. They do. There are a lot of people who do. Uh, my situation was uh, I had, um, after I got my bachelor's, mm -hmm. I got married. I had a son and my child was sickly. Uh, I started out to just do two mm -hmm. years. This is how good God is because I started those two years, just knew I was going to get right mm -hmm. through it. I had to stop mm -hmm. because my son was sick. I was living here in Flint and driving to Ann Arbor, back and forth, you know, in the snow and right. everything. And I was really trying, but because he was sick, I had to drop out at some point. But I would keep going just a little, just a little. And it took me seven years to, to do the five, to get my master's okay. degree, oh, okay, okay. to do the two. But mm -hmm. I was bound and determined never to give up because I knew I could do this. And I want to encourage people too, the young people out there. Ask questions, you know, find out what's going on because I had understood that since it took me so long to get my master's that I wasn't going to be able to use the first two classes that I had. And I said, please tell me another mm -hmm. way to do this. And they gave me some books and said, go study for two weeks. Mm -hmm. If you pass this oral exam by both of these classes, then we're going to let you graduate. So let me make sure I understand. You said... What should have take, taken, well, or what could have taken two years, took you seven. seven. So uh, that's encouragement mm -hmm. be because different people for different reasons. Not everybody yeah. is not, well, it's best if you can go straight through and get done. But everybody for whatever reason, and different people have different reasons. Right. Um, and stopping because of your son, that's, a, I mean, it's not good that he was sick, but it's good that you stopped. That's right. And because what if you hadn't? Right. You know, but... Um, Everybody can't go straight through, but the thing is, is to keep your eyes on the prize, realize that this is your purpose, and, and, and the obstructions still does not mean, does not negate your destiny, 
and you can finish. You can get it done. Um, so, did, do you have a mentor? Or did you have any mentors back then? Or, and do you have a mentor now? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was a little harder for me because mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone else that had a doctorate. I didn't mm -hmm. even know what you do or anything like that. That's why I said I, I had to have that thing in my heart that really wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. And I had to do a lot of research on my own in order to even know that I could get something like that. And I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I used to work in the library <laughs> and I used to, I was supposed to be shelving books. <clears throat> I think every young person <laughs> understands what I'm talking about. And instead of shelving books, I ran into some books that I really liked. Mm -hmm. So I would go in between the bookshelves and I would just read about people. Mm -hmm. People who had come from almost nothing to something. And that inspired me. Like, I didn't have to be rich. I didn't have to live in a beautiful home. I didn't have to have all that. Mm -hmm. But I did have to have enough inside of me, enough determination to know that I could do this. And I saw it in those books over and over again. I always say that I, th I think everybody needs a mentor. And sometimes you have to find your mentor in a book. And I, I always did. said sometimes you find your mentor in a book. So if there's no one around, if like like Dr. Belinda said, she felt like Dr. Ross, she felt like no one was around, no one she could talk to, she didn't have any physical examples. Well, maybe you might feel like you don't have one either. That's why we have Inside the Haven Television Show for one thing. But find your mentor in a book. Uh, I've heard I've heard another saying that if 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 you want someone, if you want to hide something, put it in a book because by and large, mm -hmm. people don't like to read. <laughs> uh, but there's so much information in books. Uh, that's good. Uh, so, what obstacles, what obstacles, if any, have you had to overcome to become Dr. Belinda Ross? So many. <laughs> so many. Um, well, in the beginning, like I said, uh -huh. you know, I had to do seven years in order to finish the master's. And then when I... Well, well, um, how long did it take you to get your the bachelor's? Three years. Oh, so you did that in... That, so that normally takes four, but you did that in three. But I graduated early. Okay. And so I was very young when I um, went to Grand Valley State uh -huh. for my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And I just decided on my own, I'm going to do three years. Mm -hmm. In other words, I just wanted to keep going. I'm going to be honest, you know, coming from a very, very poor background, I was always sure that somebody was going to take my money before I finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so every opportunity, and I tell my students this today, every opportunity that comes your way, don't say, I can't do it. Try it. Try it. Even if you don't make it, try it again. Mm -hmm. You know, something else will come up. So I saw two summers where I had an opportunity to get my credits and graduate in three years. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. That's what I did. Uh, that's why I said earlier, don't excuse yourself from success. Don't count yourself out. Mm -hmm. Don't tell yourself you can't do it. Don't tell yourself it won't happen. Because if you do that, if you keep repeating that, r running that tape in your brain, in your mind, it won't happen. You won't do it. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, stop right here and uh, do what I call a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Destiny Holly. Uh, Destiny is an 11th grader at Grand Blank uh, High School. And she uh, earned the, the, the status of student of the month for being just an all around good student. She has, she has improved greatly uh, in, in her academics. And once again, congratulations to you, Destiny Holly. And keep up the good work. And that was sent in by her mom, Carlene Holly. Um, and so right here too, I want to say that uh, mom and dad, uh, if you have uh, your, your, your son, daughter, anywhere between the ages of 13 and 24, if anything they've done that, that you're congratulating them for, commending them for, well, we want to congratulate them too. Send me an email at um, insidethehaven at gmail.com um, and just let me know that what who they are, what their name, their grade, their GPA, if you want to disclose that, and just tell me what they've done, and because we want to mention them on the show, and also I'm looking for uh, some talent, young talent. If you sing, dance, uh, you do spoken word poetry. If you're good in math, uh, I've got a box. I'm gonna have him come on and just do some shadow boxing moves. Uh, I want to showcase and highlight the young people in our area. We, we want we want to let people know what you are. There are some good things right here in Flint. And we want to just put them on blast. Uh, okay. Um, thank you. Uh, okay, Dr. Belinda. Um, so what do you like most about what you do? Well, 
I absolutely love what I do. Good. I, I'm very passionate about it because I see the rewards in what I do. Mm -hmm. I have people who come to me really broken, really believing that they cannot be whole again. Mm -hmm. However, I literally have watched people begin to become whole again mm -hmm. and to live a good life and a healthy life. And so every time I'm able to help someone get to that point, it just means everything to me. It really does. That is truly my reward to see my patients, my students, to see people progress because they have sought the help, they've gotten the help, and they've become whole again. I like to say that that uh, God is the equalizer. Absolutely. We all have uh, uh, some kind of shortcoming or fault or whatever because um, we're, we're born into a world of sin. And, but like I said, the God is equalizer, and, and so we all have need of something mm -hmm. to, to, to make us whole and make us complete. And so it's good that, you know, God has put it in, in the hearts of, you know, good men and women such as yourself to become, a, you know, uh, to help. Right. To, to, to help, to, to be, a, you know, uh, doctors of psychology and, and what have you, to help because we need help. You know, scripture. You know, scripture says that the Holy Spirit is the counselor. So thank God that you are full of the Holy Spirit, and so you know, God. God gives you wisdom. We gave you the wisdom and the desire to go get the degree in the first place, and and so uh, and so the wisdom that you have from God, along with what you've learned, you know, all the the fancy book learning. <laughs> uh, I don't want to minimize that, but. Um, that you that you have acquired. You no, know, I can explain how you put that together. Okay, put it together. Because people often ask me, how are you educated, and how do you bring Christianity into it? Thank God you do. And and God just gave me the perfect example mm -hmm. in working with ministers in Los Angeles. And I just remember one incident that was so powerful, where um, the pastor referred a young man to me who was. Like right next to the pastor in the mm -hmm. church. He did everything. He was superintendent of Sunday school. He was a deacon. He was in Bible class. Everything. And he knew the Bible very, mm -hmm. very well. So when he came to me, I asked him what was the problem. And he said, well, my wife, she cries all the time. I have no idea why. She's always crying. I'm a good man. I pay the house note. I buy her clothes. I buy food. I take care of my children. I do everything. He said, I don't understand it. He said, so I told her the last time, look, do what I do. Just Take your burdens to the altar and leave them there. Mm -hmm. And she started to cry again. So I finally talked to my pastor and said, I think we need some help. So I said to him, I said, well, sir, you know, he had his Bible under his arm when he came in. I said, you look like a very learned man. Mm -hmm. So oh, yes, ma'am, I am. I'll never forget it. I said, and you believe every, every word in the Bible, right? Yes, ma'am. He opened the Bible and he started reading scripture. And, you know, I love scripture. And for a minute, I almost forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I started to say amen. And mm -hmm. then I realized how, how passionate he was about it. And he truly believed. And I said, well, what do you say to your wife when she cries? So just stop crying. Stop crying. You don't need to cry. You just need to do what I told you. Take them to the altar. He said, I, I don't cry. He said, I don't. And that's when I said, sir. You truly believe everything in that Bible? Mm -hmm. And you've read me some awesome scriptures. He said, yes. I said, there's one scripture you forgot. Very small but powerful. And he said, what's that? I said, Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. I said, sir, you said you don't cry. Mm -hmm. Are you greater than me? <laughs> that was the wow. end of that. That mm -hmm. was the end of that. And he said, he started to cry for like 45 minutes. I've never, mm -hmm. ever had a client to do that. And I would never get up and say, don't cry, but I told him, don't cry. I said, please don't cry. And when he finally finished, he looked at me and he said, Doc, my father never taught me how mm -hmm. to love my wife. Mm -hmm. That was enough for me right there. That's in the scripture too. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, thank you, Dr. Belinda. Thank you so much for thank being you. here with me today. Uh, Dr. Belinda right now, she's from Flint, but she lives in Atlanta. And so uh, she came all the way here to be with me. <laughs> Yes, I did. So anyway, um, so once again, thank you for joining us here on Inside the Haven, where we are mentoring minds and changing lives. Um, and once again, it, you know, I invite you, young, uh, mom, dad, sister, brother, whoever you are, to come and be with us, do an interview, share with us whatever your business, uh, your profession, because someone out there might want to be what you are, do what you do. Uh, but if you don't want to come on the show, you can uh, 
go to uh, insidethehaven.com. My website, you can post an interview there. Just follow the links. Uh, it's easy. And you can also upload your, upload your favorite favorite selfie. Um, send us Again, send us an email at insidethehaven at gmail.com. If you have a young person that you want us to mention their accomplishments, uh, you can uh, hit me up on uh, Facebook. I'm on Facebook, uh, The Haven for Teens and uh, Young Adults on Facebook. Or you can just, I'm Toy Pridgen on um, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at The Haven underscore Miss Toy. Uh, Instagram, Miss Toy underscore Inside The Haven. And um, that's it. And once again, thank you. I love you all and see you soon. Bye bye. Say the shameless poem, just trying to avoid where the shameless go. Love my father whole deeper than a rich man. We say believe it, it's so it way over oh, another I know it's for Jesus. He is faith as big as a mustard seed is. All the things in this world are deedless. All but he is a Bible and a verse. Put the Bible, beat the hearse, put the shackles off this curse. He beat the worst. And when you wake up, wait, make sure you put God first. Put God first. I believe in the Father. I believe in his son. I believe in his son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is one. The Trinity is one. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in his son. I believe in his son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is one. The Trinity is one. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in his son. I believe in his son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is this ain't a shameless poem. He's trying to believe it. One way over another, I know it's for Jesus. He is faith as big as a mustard seed is. All the things in this world are deedless. All but he is a Bible and a verse. Put the Bible, beat the hearse. Put the shackles off this curse. He beat the worst. And when you wake up, wait, make sure you put God first. Put God first. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in His Son. I believe in His Son. And the Holy I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in His Son. I believe in His Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is one. The Trinity is one. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in His Son. I believe in His Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is one. The Trinity is one. This ain't a shameless poem. Just trying to avoid where the shame I believe in His Son. I believe in His Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the Trinity is one. The Trinity is one. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in His Son. I believe in His Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the Trinity is one. The Trinity is one. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Father. I believe in His Son. I believe in His Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the Trinity is one. The Trinity is one. This ain't a shameless poem. Trying to avoid where the shame is going.